Hi everyone, welcome to MKT 563 Big Data and Marketing Analytics. Here we're looking at Insight Maker and its use for and creating simulations. Now what I have up on the screen here is the three different types of structures you'll find in most simulation models. Just to re recap, a simulation model is a representation of reality over, over time and it's a way of us making sense of, of a complex system around us. In the previous lecture, which is lecture 10, and also the previous video I explained the basics of Insight Maker and developing a fairly simple model. So there are three different types of model which are shown in this uh, particular um, uh, series of models here from Insight Maker. The first is what we call feedback independent model. Again, these are in lecture 10, where we have an entity or a flow, which is just simply water going to a bathtub, or this could be um, sales triggering production or demand. A positive feedback loop, similar to the BAS model of, of innovations, acceptance of innovations, is where um, you have a compounding effect or a geometric effect here. And so that the interest on the savings account here is determined if we click on this little equation here by how much we have in our account times a savings rate. So here's our interest rate here, which is about 3%, not much. But you'll see over time this compounds or increases the rate. So we call this a positive feedback loop in that the stock is feeding back into the what we call the flow, which increases the factor of the stock, in this case our money. Balancing structures have both positive and negative feedback group links in them. And we'll create a sort of balancing uh, loop in a minute here. So a balancing structure here, we have our positive flow which we've got over here, but we also have a gap or a limit which is the maximum flow rate which stops the flow rate once the bath is full. And so we call this a negative feedback rate and hence this is called a balancing structure. These kinds of structures we tend to think are goal centered. In other words, how long does it take to fill the bathtub up or how long does it take to meet demand? Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to run you through creating what we call a balancing structure here. We've already created a positive feedback loop in the uh, other YouTube video that I've created in this area, which was building a first uh, simple model in Insight Maker. So this is what our final model will look like here. And the model consists of infantry in a, produced by a factory, there are orders coming in and the factory wants to keep a certain level of target infantry. We've got some sliders or variables that we can have in the model here, sorry. And we have our production flows determined by um, how much we can actually, um, firstly by a maximum production rate here, which, but also the flow rate is determined along here by the difference between the gap and infantry level. So I'll just move myself out of the way here. Okay, so in other words, we stop producing once we, we meet our gap. Okay, once, we, we, once the gap becomes zero. Okay, all right. So let's, see, let's go ahead and create this model. To create a new model in Insight Maker, you just click on, on the top, where are we, left hand side there which is create new, make new insight. Right, just click to clear this demo here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to make our stock measures. So we'll just click over here and we'll create the first one which we'll call uh, inventory. Okay, we'll set this with an initial value of say 100. So we start with something in the, the store, okay? Um, then of course we have a flow into a stock. The way you do that is just start with the line and draw out and then you reverse the arrow. So we just go up here and just click on this reverse arrow. And we're gonna call this one here production. Right. Okay. 
The other stock that we have that flows in and out, of course, are, are our orders. And so we're going to add that in to the, to the model down here. And these are orders. Should always follow orders. Okay. And that affects inventory. Now, of course, it negatively affects. Now, the way that we we show a negative thing in a model, just to, just to sort of have it is to use a red colour for a negative effect, that in other words, makes something smaller, and a blue line for a positive effect that makes something bigger. Right, so that's our flow measure there. Orders will set as a slider, and the way we do that, a slider means that we can manipulate, or the user can manipulate various types of, of inputs into the model. And we'll, say, we'll set the slider to a maximum of 1,000 and a minimum of 10. Okay, so there are stocks in our model so far. Sorry about that, I'll just close this off. Okay, um, the next thing to do is just quickly save this model. It's a good idea to save as we go, so we're just going to call this uh, balancing... Uh, let's just call this uh, inventory model. Inventory model. You might have some descriptions. I'm just going to say teaching model here. Okay. We're going to make a public insight and you should share it to the group that you've just joined. And you click on save there. The beauty of this is it will save as we go, uh, as we make major changes, and you can see it's just saved there as well. Okay, so now we need to add our variables into the model. The variables here are usually yellow, and we've got first one over here, which is called target inventory. Okay, now we're going to make this into a slider as well because we want to um, see what the difference between target inventory is. So we just go to over here where it says show value slider and we'll make, we'll give it the same sort of value. So we'll say 1,000 uh, and the slider steps are 10. Okay, the other thing we want to change also is the settings. We want to change this to days because we think it's realistic to simulate production schedule over a number of days. Okay. Doesn't affect the model, but it's just used to describe what we're doing. So the next uh, variable we need to add is what we call um, the gap. So we're just going to add that one in. And the gap is the difference between our inventory and our target inventory. Okay, now to use these variables in a model, we need to link them, okay? So again, we click on this model and we go to link. So target inventory affects the gap, and the gap is also affected by what we have down here in our inventory, right? Okay, so what we now need to do, of course, is calculate or put in a, a create the, the, the measure for gap. And we simply go to value in the equation here. Right? And what it will equal is our target inventory, right? How much we want to keep, less our current, uh, what we actually have in there now. And we click on apply. Okay? Now, of course, we just want, if we want to code these, we'll make a, a positive for blue and infantry as it gets bigger reduces the gap, so it's a negative line. Again, you'll notice that the model is saving as we're going. Okay, so the next thing to work out then is how we, the production function here that we have, um, what determines it. So we've got another variable here which is our maximum production rate. So we're going to add another variable here. Okay. And we're going to call this... So this is at how fast the factory can run on any day. Max production rate. Okay. And 
the most we can run this factory, let's say, is 100 units. Okay. Now, again, we've got to link these values to our production function in order to be able to use them in an equation. So what we're really saying is the production is a function of the maximum production rate that we can do, the most we can do, and the gap. And there are some other things that will affect this flow along here. Okay? Uh, we've just got to reverse these arrows to make sure they're going in the, in the right direction so it's affecting this. So the gap, of course, is a positive. So again, what we'll do is we'll make this line positive. Um, so we'll make it blue, right? And uh, this is also positive. That's the maximum we can do. Okay, so now we need to set our flow rate. Okay, so we only produce according to um, a... Oh, just a quick check. If you click on simulate in the model, it will tell you if you've got any errors. Well, obviously, we haven't got the model working yet, but that means everything in the model is working. So I've, term, I've classified all my variables. So what we're going to have to do is the flow rate of production along here, right, depends upon combination of, the, of what, we, what we produce in the day up to when we meet the gap, right? So there's a little if-then equation, if-then-else, that we've got from the previous model. And I'm just going to copy this across. These are all in the notes, by the way. Okay. And I'll explain what I'm doing here. Okay, so we'll just put the this in here. Whoops. Okay, so what this says is, if the gap is greater than the production rate, right, so there's a gap between inventory and our desired inventory, okay, then produce the ma maximum production rate up to when the gap is done. That's what that means. Okay, so we've saved that. So let's just see if the model starts R. So we've now got an, we've now got an error, and it's saying that it can't find maximum production rate. Always a little bit tricky, this. Okay. So let's just have a look at what we've got over here in our old model. That looks all right. Sure that we've got everything working here. Oh, okay. So oh, we, what we haven't done, we'll just go to our, just click off here. We've got no orders and no inventory. So let's let's um, let's just. I've just created a target inventory of 440, and orders are about a little bit the same. And we'll run the model here. Okay. So the way this works, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Oh, make it a bit. There we go, here. Perhaps you can configure this model, by the way, to make it a bit easier. And I'll just put the legend on the top here and click on Apply, just to make it a little bit easier for us, for us to see it. And we're just going to run the model again, and I'll explain what's going on here. OK, so here our orders. Obviously, it's a straight line. Our target inventory is the same. The thing is here is the max production is our uh, inventory, as you can see. It takes a while for our inventory to and our production to go, and production usually stops after we produce the inventory there. Okay, so uh, this is just showing you how often, how long it will take to fill up a series of orders in production given our uh, simulation model here. Uh, other primitives you can add here. We just might want to label this model, so we'll just call this model balancing loop model production. Okay. Now the model I've saved, um, some various approaches you can take here is that we might uh, look at the model ac across different values to see what's going on in terms of uh, sensitivity. So what happens if 
target inventory is small and the orders well are larger so again we can we can run uh, a number of simulations here to, to show the uh, sensitivity of the model the other way you can do that by the way which is interesting is we can do what's called sensitivity testing where we can uh, look at something like um, target infantry and we can run a number of approaches here and you can see our target inventory is the same because it is the same um, but we, we can actually run a number of simulations and compare those results in a table and that's often called sensitivity analysis. Other things you can do of course you can uh, export this model back onto your, your, your hard drive and import it. You can publish the article, you can actually embed it in a web page, that's quite useful as well. Um, also I've put up a whole range of other models for you to look at here under um, Insight Maker. So if we just click on the home button here, okay so there's my balancing. Here's our simple bass model we did. Um, that's the more complicated one. Uh, let's, let's just pick another one here. Okay, so I found these under Find More Insights over here, and, I, and you simply clone them into your model here. So if we run this model here, this is just a stock and flow model, as you can see here. We've got new customers coming in. Uh, as customers come in, profits go up. You've got a sales and marketing budget there and the sales and marketing budget affects uh, the new customers becoming exception customers. Then you've got negative feedback loops up here which are things like effectiveness, the idea that the market is saturated and the size of the market over here. So this is an example and you can see where we've got uh, what we call a balancing loose loop structure developed by I think another student in another, in another course in this area. So hopefully I've provided the basics here in um, producing your assignment. The, good, the best thing to do is to start by drawing your model, drawing some of these relationships and I guess uh, then starting to model what's going on here as well. Just be aware that you know the difference between what we call stocks, amounts of things and variables which affect those. Thanks very much for your time for listening. I hope you found this video informative.